Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. Drew here from Lone Fox. Today we have another makeover. I have been so into makeovers lately. I've just been liking larger scale projects. So that's what I'm giving you guys. And we have a rental friendly bathroom makeover. This is a small bathroom. And this is my friend Hannah and Jared's bathroom. Hi guys, I'm Hannah. I'm Jared. This is our first apartment together and we love it so much but we have an issue with the bathroom. It's honestly super boring and there's actually no storage. Yeah. Um, we moved in about a year and a half ago yep. and we have touched like every other room in the house, but mm -hmm. are just so stuck on what to do in the bathroom. So we're excited to have Drew's help. We've been watching his videos forever um, and we've known Drew, I went to school with him. So we're really excited to have his help and we can't wait to see what you do. Thank you, Drew. Thank you. When I first saw Hannah and Jared's bathroom, I loved it and there was also some issues with it that Hannah told me about. She basically mentioned that there is zero storage in this entire bathroom, which is 100% true. It is a very, very small space just by off of viewing it here. I bet you it's like a good six by six walkable area in here. But my favorite part was the tile work. There's really pretty tile work, which to me is a great base. So we are going to just update this space, keep it all 100% rental friendly, but this video is going to have so many really fun techniques crafty DIY projects and all around I think you guys are really going to gain something from this video if you have a rental so stay tuned and let's get started I'm fully wet <laughs> I tried putting the camera in the shower and I turned it on on accident <laughs> so <laughs> what I was trying to do before rudely being interrupted by the shower spraying on me was share with you guys the first step of this process so Lighting in here is also a little crazy. We want to create some under the sink storage in here and I want to do it rental friendly so we can basically create like a pull out vanity so when they leave they can essentially remove it or you know if the landlord wants to keep it for some reason they can also do so. And what I was thinking was actually to create a wood piece on the left side here, wood piece on the right side here and then create some shelving within. And of course the shelving that's higher up is just going to have to be in front of the piping here but we have a pretty decent amount of space, probably like 12 inches for the front of the cabinet so I think it could actually work really well and I'm gonna take some measurements and then head down and kind of share with you guys how I'm gonna construct this rental friendly vanity situation. For the materials you're going to need, I grabbed three sheets of this three quarter inch wide plywood. This is two foot by four foot from Lowe's. They were $14.50 each and you're going to need three of them for this project. Now what I started off by doing was just measuring the height of my sink and also the depth of it because we're going to want to create two sides and of course this is going to totally vary per situation. So I'm just cutting out those two sides using my circular saw and a ruler. Little update on our DIY vanity situation. I have cut the left panel and right panel and bottom panel. Something that I noticed is that the floor is actually slanted a little bit downwards because if you can tell, there is no gap down here at the bottom, but there is a pretty large gap up here. And when I push this back, it literally makes it perfectly flush, which was the measurement that I had measured for. So I think I'm going to go ahead and construct this and just kind of like screw the side pieces to the bottom and then find just a small piece of wood that I could tuck under this bottom lip to tilt it all back just a tiny bit but it's just gonna make it more level in the end and then we're gonna add a couple of shelves in here as well and then this is of course gonna be painted in a later step So I drilled the bottom to the two sides so we have a nice base here. Now once we add in the shelves, it's going to be a lot more stable because as you can see currently, it kind of looks like it doesn't meet up. But once we add the shelves in, it's going to pull it back. I'm going to head to Target quickly. I'm going to see, just because there's a Target around the corner, if I could find some baskets to fit in the shelving over there. Just because I want to see what is available and then we could make the shelves for it and the vanity situation will be done. And then we could work on the wall. 
to create the shelves for this piece. You're just gonna cut them out based off the dimensions you need for your space. And then I'm using these L brackets here and I'm gonna be screwing them onto the underside of each shelf and I'm gonna be doing two on each side. That way we could essentially slide it in as shown here. And then I'm using my drill just to screw into the side of those L brackets and have the shelf essentially be mounted inside. Now I actually used the baskets that I purchased and flipped them sideways, which allowed my shelf to sit on top. And then I could easily just screw in the shelf from the side and it was a perfect height for those baskets then of course uh, fit back in once I had the shelves up and I just loved the way this vanity turned out I also like that there's a little shelf at the top for some more open concept storage our DIY bathroom vanity storage rental friendly solution has been created and it's perfect. This is exactly what I was envisioning. We have four large, more closed off storage bins, which are great. And these are pretty substantial. I mean, you could probably fit a good amount of products in there. And then up here, I'm going to use it as more of like an open concept to display maybe like a decor piece and then a couple of, you know, cotton rounds, flossers, whatever they might be, like just easy access items up there. And it's nice because you really can't see any of the plumbing when you're standing. And of course there's not gonna be people like sitting in the shower looking over there. It looks so great. And it's gonna be painted of course. This is just a solid wood for the time being. Our vanity is complete and I'm so excited to add a coat of paint to that tomorrow. But we have our storage solution added, but now we need to spice up these walls. But something about the space is that we are not allowed to paint. The landlord said no painting at all, but I found an alternate solution. So of course we could do, you know, a peel and stick wallpaper, but I didn't wanna just do a patterned peel and stick wallpaper. I really wanted to do like a wall treatment and I thought beadboard would look great in here however beadboard is not temporary it's not rental friendly until I found a wallpaper version of beadboard and it is essentially like an embossed kind of foamy material fully paintable it resembles beadboard but of course I can't apply permanent wallpaper to these walls in here that is not rental friendly so I kind of looked up a solution online I went on Google and I was like how can you make permanent wallpaper temporary and I came across this tutorial by Kelly from studio DIY I know her and she did a tutorial on putting painter's tape down first and then putting the wallpaper over the top of it, which essentially creates kind of a barrier between the wall and the wallpaper itself. So we're gonna be taping off half the wall. Day one complete, all of the tape has been added onto more like the bottom 40% of the wall, but it's all taped off, ready for our wallpaper application tomorrow. So I'll catch you guys here in the morning. Good morning guys, day two over at Hannah and Jared's apartment. I'm in the bathroom and this morning I was a little bit nervous honestly because I woke up and I was like okay what I need to do today is go get some double-sided tape and I looked up places to get it at and there was like no double-sided tape available anywhere at least in the quantities that I needed so I was like what am I going to do like how am I gonna apply this to the wall? Because essentially I needed a good amount of double-sided tape that was very strong and everything came in really small amounts. It was expensive. I didn't realize that. I probably should have done a bit more research prior. However, this wallpaper is pasteable. So I decided to do just a little sample of it and I pasted on just one strip of our beadboard wallpaper and it looks really good, you guys. And it was not messy, not crazy at all. I thought it was gonna be like really bad to paste on over the top of the tape. Not bad whatsoever. It just went right over the top of it, super simply and easily. It seems to be working out well so far. I'm gonna continue on with the process and let you guys know how it goes. This wallpaper was surprisingly pretty easy to work with. Now, something I will say is once it is wet, it becomes a lot more delicate. So you do have to be very, very careful with it. However, this is my first time ever doing paste wallpaper and I just wetted it in the shower and I applied it on the wall. It was not messy in any way. I thought it was actually pretty simple and I would definitely do paste wallpaper again. I've always heard like bad things about it, but it wasn't too bad. 
so far so good with the bead board wallpaper. It actually goes on pretty easily and a lot of the reviews said that it's really hard to work with but it actually isn't too bad. I will say that it does rip really easily. I actually had a tiny little rip right here. I ripped the corner off but I'm hoping once this is painted of course I will kind of camouflage that area there but it is looking really nice all the way across. This is all shadows. Don't think this is rippling. I've been looking at this and I'm like oh my gosh what did I do? It's shadows from this window because when I kind of stand in front of it if you guys can tell they go away and as this dries it does shrink up a little bit and kind of create a smoother finish as well going to apply our last piece here and then we're going to select a paint color Good morning, everyone. Day three, I believe, over at Hannah and Jared's, and I walked in to such a lovely sight this morning because the wallpaper looks perfect. I was a little nervous yesterday. As it was drying, I just wanted to make sure that, of course, it wasn't gonna soak through the tape, it wasn't gonna ripple. Look how perfect that looks, and I already peeled back like a little bit of tape on one of the corners to make sure it didn't soak through. We are golden. It is basically removable wallpaper now. Now we have to go through and paint it all, and then we're gonna add a trim piece on top to cover these rough edges. I want to just wrap up all of the larger kind of elements in this bathroom so we can get to the fun part, which is adding the decor. Now, of course, you're going to want to go through and tape off any areas you don't want your paint to hit. And I did actually tape mine off pretty generously just to ensure that absolutely zero paint was going to get anywhere on the walls. So when it comes to doing like the edging of all of this, which is essentially where I painted it, I'm really gonna go in with a dry brush because I don't want any excess to kind of pull out of the paper or anything. And I'm just gonna like really dry brush this on as opposed to like heavy handedly apply it. Cause we don't want it to bleed on anything that it could potentially ruin. I know it's nothing new, but it's so good to see you. This every day, and I'm still so amazed by you. Our first coat of paint is currently drying, and I figured while that's drying, I'm going to swap out our light fixture up here. The medicine cabinet opens right under the shade, so I had to find one that wouldn't kind of pop down too much, and I'm hoping this one will work. We're gonna have to give it a go. We had a little change in plans with the light. Thankfully, I ordered two lights because the mounting plate that was already up here, or the, I guess the mounting box that's installed in the wall, only had holes on the top and bottom, but the light before can only be mounted in the top and bottom. So thankfully, I ordered this light as well. I wasn't sure which one I wanted to use, and I was just gonna return one of them, but this one has the mounting um, on the left and right side, which is perfect. I'm gonna flip it upwards. It's supposed to be mounted down like this, but I'm gonna flip it up, and I already, Got it working, you guys. And it's kind of cute, actually. So let's get that up on the wall. Second coat has been applied on. I'm on FaceTime with Erica right now, showing her the room. I'm going to go through and remove the tape so we can see what it looks like. Tape is removed and we are gonna work on the vanity next. The first thing I'm gonna do to it is apply on this edging here, which is like heat activated edging. That's just gonna make it a lot smoother on the front. So when we paint it, it's gonna look a lot more cohesive. And the color I'm gonna be painting the vanity is actually the same color as the Architectural Digest bookcase. It is called Wheat Bread. I'm gonna go ahead and mount the uh, Roman shades that I actually created a couple nights ago. I just did these when I knew I was gonna do this project just to have them done.
Guys, I love the Roman shade. It looks perfect in here. I wanted to add something just to the top of the window that gave you the option of opening and closing it. And I actually created these with some really kind of slubby linen fabric. And I just love how they turned out. I followed the same tutorial I always do. I will link it below for you guys. It's by the DIY Mommy. I figured that um, if you want a really great like in-depth tutorial, definitely watch her video as opposed to me inserting like a little tutorial in here. I added a small screw just right in the crack here, which you never see see if you were to remove it. It's literally like in this tiny little slit of wall and it allows you to open and close them. So the last thing I'm probably gonna do today is just go downstairs and cut the trim pieces for all the way around the edge here. Let me just actually go downstairs and share with you guys the trim. So these guys are the trim right here. They have a slight little like scalloped detail to them, like a bottom ridge and then a larger middle and then a top. So it's a really simple trim piece. And I'm gonna cut these down. I already measured all the sizes that I need and then we're going to apply it with some Velcro strips. So here is a look at the trim after it's Velcroed on. It has the slightest, slightest little gap in there, but of course, totally rental friendly. Look at this, you guys, just pop it right off and it just covers up those edges there. And then you just remove the wallpaper when you're ready to move out. So let's just apply the last couple pieces. Look at this site I just walked into, you guys. How great is this bathroom looking so far? And I know that there's still some tape here. I ended up actually wrapping a piece around because the wallpaper just wasn't cutting very nicely and it looked very just not clean. So I'm gonna paint this the same color white as the wall currently, and it's just gonna be on there. And then when they remove it, it'll just come right off. But we are gonna be adding all of the fun details today, the decor, I have some artwork here. I might do a frame around the mirror, but I'm also really just liking the mirror itself without a frame, which is kind of strange. I thought I'd really want a frame on there. Light fixture looks incredible. Vanity looks perfect. But let's get to styling the space. Oh, I haven't even said hi today. Hi guys. I'm so excited. This is turning out so pretty. All right, let's get going. So I have yet to share this art piece with you guys, but I got this at the Roseville Flea Market a couple weeks back. And I was so in love with it when I found it. It is a really beautiful hand-painted art piece. And I just loved the framing on this. Like, look at the dimension on the backside of how many layers there are. And I thought this would add so much drama right above the toilet, you guys. I'm really excited about this. Now, of course, this bathroom is on the smaller side, so I knew I wanted to keep the decor pretty minimal, but I wanted decor that really just spoke to the room and just enhanced everything overall. So I found really unique pieces like this vase here. I found this beautiful candle, which I love so much. I popped back in the baskets for our drawers and the vanity, and then I just added a couple of other simple touches like a hand towel, a wall hook, and a frame, and just a couple other bits of decor around the space. Alrighty, you guys, the bathroom is complete, and this makeover, I am absolutely in love with it. I'm actually pretty shocked with the way that it turned out. It turned out better than I expected. It is beautiful. It looks like a fully designed bathroom, and I cannot believe this is rental friendly, first of all, and I did all of this for under $300 in here. Of course, this bathroom had great bones, and if you hear that rattling, there's a lot of wind happening outside, and um, it just has really beautiful tile work in here, so I wanted to kind of use it as a base and just give their drab bathroom a little bit more of an update. Sadly, there's not going to be a reveal with Hannah and Jared, just because with work and their schedule, it just didn't really align up for a reveal. However, they are going to love it, I hope. Um, and I'm gonna reveal it to you guys right about now. Vision that 
Well, I just filmed everything and forgot to put the soap dispenser in, so that's what that looks like there. Just a quick outro, I just wanted to thank you guys so much for watching today's video, and if you are not already, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I post brand new home decor and DIY content, a lot of rental-friendly, small space makeovers here on the channel, so make sure to click that subscribe button, follow me over on Instagram and TikTok at Lone Fox Home for even more behind the scenes, and I'll catch you guys in my next one. Bye!